Um, I'm very excited to be at Bar Galleries with um, Jenny Nelligan and Penny Moyer. And yeah, it's just so wonderful to be here. I was wondering if maybe we could start just talking about how the gallery began, because my understanding is that it hasn't always been in this space. No, that's right, it hasn't. It started in Bowen Street. Um, and actually it was going to be a children's bookshop. Wow. I'd been living in Masterton and working for David Headley at Headley's Bookshop and had done a children's book fair based on one I saw at the ICA in London. It was a Penguin children's book fair. And out of that came the idea of my doing a children's bookshop in Wellington. Um, I was dying to get back to Wellington. I was in Masterton because my parents were there, I'd come back from overseas. And um, that was all go ahead. And at the same time, I became a good friend of Neil Rose, who mm. was the director of the Warrior for Art Centre. He was the current Evening Post art critic, and he was looking for spaces and found one. I was in Wellington, he was in Wellington, he didn't know where I was, and I bumped into him at Susie's Cafe. And he said, oh, I've been trying to find you. Um, <laughs> I found a space. And it was behind number nine cafe. Lois Daish had told him about it. Neil used to go there for breakfast and things. And he had um, found the space and said, you must come and look at it. I went down, I said, yeah, sure, I'll come and have a look at it. We were in there and he said, oh, but it's no good for a children's bookshop. And what he didn't know was that Penguin, the day, Graham Beatty the day before, had said, um, look, we can't do it. We just don't think it's going to work financially. So I'd gone down there with a heavy heart anyway. The, how it started was I never said no. I mean, because <laughs> I was determined to get back to Wellington from Masterton. Mm. And that's, that's how it started. So Neil was very influential in terms of um, artists. Mm. He had contacts with artists. It started, we... Um, we're going to have a ceramic mm -hmm. shop to underpin the, the exhibition side. By complete coincidence um, in terms of time, there was no one showing the works of young artists at that time. Um, not, not Peter, not Louise Beale, mm -hmm. um, not Antipodes, not who else was there? Um, Yana? No, no. Oh, yes, Yana, yes, she had just taken over Brooker Gallery. Mm. So then a letter turned up on Neil's desk from Deborah Buston. And she had been in an exhibition the year before with Alison Clouston and Ewan McLeod. Mm. And they had a very successful exhibition in the settlement. But Deborah wrote to Neil saying, No one would show my work. And that, um, he gave that letter to me, I went to see Deborah, and that's, that's how we opened. Similarly, um, Rob and Kahuki were just a couple, a year or so later, um, contacted Neil with Wahini Toa, mm. um, and no one would show that either. It, that seems, it seems so much about relationships, you know, and I wonder, I wonder about your relationship, Penny, did it? sort of start with the gallery and the move into this space or how did you two start? No, much earlier together? than that. I really stumbled across Bowen Galleries on the terrace and it was the most extraordinary space I had mm. seen and I loved the work and I stalked Jenny for a bit <laughs> and discovered that we were almost neighbours. And I, was, I had a catering business at that time and I said to her, if you ever need anyone to look after the space, I'll do it. And then Jenny was still working with Christopher Moore mm. at that time. And I helped Christopher out a lot because he was a very, very good valuer and needed time to do that. As time went on, um, Christopher decided to spend much more time on valuations. And Bowen Galleries and Christopher Moore had moved down to Gusney Street. Mm. Mm. At that point, our rent was going to be huge for Jenny to do on her own. And we agreed that we would work together. We became business partners in 2005. And then in the teeth of the GFC, mm. our rent was going up enormously where we were. And this space that we're currently in was on the market. 
So we bought it. Wow. And it's been the best thing we could have done. It's been terrific, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. it's such a beautiful space. And this area is really interesting, isn't it? Like, as far as the community oh, of so gallery owners. neighbourhood. Yeah. Mm. You know, I think that's Wellington, too. Mm. Um, we often hear from our Auckland colleagues how collegial Wellington is. And actually, the Fired Up Ceramic Festival mm. just proved yeah. that that how we all work together with that. Yeah. Um, we are a community. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just it's really beautiful for me to see sort of coming from literature. It, it really is lovely. So this sort of beginning where it was about finding representation for perhaps people that weren't um, as visible, has that kind of continued? Like how what do you think is distinctive about the artists that you um, work with? Um, first of all, I'd say, I mean, and quickly, I'd like to honour Shona Rapeda Davies and before that, Robin Cup Kiwa, mm. um, as being really important parts of Bowen Galleries and they've introduced us to others. So that's often how we, mm. we come to find artists. I mean, Shona may tell you the story of how she came to be here. And certainly that led to Hariata and Diane Prince as well. Um, Ewan McLeod has been pivotal to the gallery mm. and that's um, introduced Joan, uh, Joanna Braithwaite, Neil Fraser, Jeff, Jeff Dixon in particular. Mm. Um, Chris O'Doherty. Chris O'Doherty, yes. And then um, Greg O'Brien. So we've had through the years these um, connections that have led to, mm. and also, I think one of the one of the really interesting things about the artists their friendships, aren't they? Yeah. We do, yeah. you know, the relationship thing is really important. Mm. Um, one, and it works both ways. Yeah. I think we nurture them where we can. There's a bit of pastoral care sometimes, but they give it back to us as well. And you're so right about relationships. Mm. Yeah. And like with this idea of relationships, like I'm sort of thinking about conversations, but I mean, the space is of, you know, the idea that there's exhibitions in here, as well as perhaps some of the work you do on behalf of the artists. How important is it to have an exhibition space, do you think? I think it's critical. I yeah. think it's critical. I mean, I, in, you know, we've just had lockdown. Mm. Um, mm. I, I am more sure than ever that a space is important. Uh, we've just been talking about it this morning at breakfast in relation to libraries equally. You yeah. know, I think it represents community space. in a way, which I think, and people coming together. Yeah. yeah. So as far as Shona goes, can you remember how you were introduced? It sounds like it was definitely an introduction. I don't know. Like, yeah. well, how did you first did find her work? To, I did have to ask Shona that the other day. Um, <laughs> I thought it was through her friend Chris Booth, mm -hmm. who we're also, you know, but in fact, I had worked with Chris Booth with the Hansel sculpture thing, so that wasn't right. She said it was Robin Kahukiwa that introduced us. And that Shona remembered coming into Bowen Street and what she remembers most of all from that was a huge ashtray full of cigarette butts <laughs> um, that I used to sit in there and smoke my And she thought, this is my place. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's her memory and I'm absolute, I'm sure that's right. Yeah, it's such wonderful work. It's really incredible. Thank you so much both. It was amazing talking to Thank you. you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Pat. I'm very excited to be here with Shona, Rapida um, Davies. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. I was wondering if maybe we could start talking about how your relationship with Bowen Gallery started with Penny and Jenny. Um, it, many, uh, it was Penny, oh, sorry, Jenny first, the Bowen Gallery in Bowen Street. Oh, yeah. And um, Robin Kahukiwa actually introduced us. And Jenny offered a uh, time for me and I said yeah okay and uh, I think it was 85, 86, I'm not sure because mm. all those paintings I think have disappeared mm. I've probably transformed them into something else or something happened mm. um, but Robin came to help me put things up and I had a mate with me, John, who's a, I forgot what his surname was He's a ceramic artist from up north oh, who yeah. used to help me a lot. Um, and he, 
I offered him a little space in the old, I don't know if you know the old gallery. <coughs> I think it had two, maybe two rooms. And <coughs> anyway, they were bringing a sheet of glass for him. He was, and so this guy came in, this glazier came in with this dirty big sheet of glass, and it unfortunately broke and slashed through his arm. And Robin was there, she was amazing. And this very tall woman just hung on to the man, very strong. Held him up, hung on to him, did the tourniquet, and I'm just about to die. She's <laughs> yeah. blood in me. Oh shit, I'm, I'm out of there. I'm running around this like a flea in a fish. She's cold. <laughs> Call the ambulance, sure enough. Oh. <laughs> it, was a bit, it was a bit crazy, but she was there right in the middle. It was amazing. So it was Robin, actually. Yeah. That's so an I amazing. Started then. That's an amazing start. Yeah. That's an amazing, you wouldn't forget that in a hurry. No, it was within a couple of years that we did number one after that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very interesting. Um, it was a very interesting time talking, being with, uh, starting with Jenny, and it's when she just stopped smoking and she had this big don't tell her. This big, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say. First of all, and it had this big huge bowl of cigarette butts to put her off and everybody else off, and it just grew. And like, every time you went there, the pilot had it really policy for good and she goes, No, this is the only way that I can realise how bad it is. That's a good way to stop, eh? Hey? Yeah. That's anyway, a really good way to stop. Eighty six maybe, eighty seven maybe. And like eighty six. Yeah. What what was it to um, <coughs> you know, that space in particular, putting your work in there, like that must have been Pretty cool. I like the height. Um, yeah, I'm not really interested in stuff. Awesome. Like that. It's about it's about making work that's more important to me. Yeah. It's just that at that particular time, there's work available. Yeah. And they had really high ceilings. Oh, nice. So that uh, I think the stub was close to five five meters. It was much higher than this wall. Yeah. So I did these big works too. I remember. Um, uh, and she was a nice lady. She's yeah. a really nice woman, so I was really pleased too. Yeah. Anyway, that's when it started. That sounds really cool. Um, would you be willing to talk a little bit about this work? Um, and, you know, it, it's beautifully made. Which one? Made. Oh, I mean the sort of the exhibition is what I mean. Sorry, I don't oh, know the link. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, the sparrows are so beautiful. And also, so, you know, I really enjoyed reading in the catalogue about how sparrows came to be here and, yeah. you know, their place and that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is making, making things is really what I do. Mm. So you start off with an, a, a, a supposition that you can do it in a particular way. And I, and I decided you could make it in a wood. Yeah. But you can make the body and maybe the wings, but not the feet. You notice in wood, the feet are always attached to the rest of the wood. And if you release the feet, the feet fall off. <laughs> it's that simple. It was that simple. And after many, I tried so hard. And I checked out in many historical texts and stuff on Chinese because they're the best. And um, they couldn't release the, wood, the, the bird from the wood either. Mm -hmm. So they asked if I could do something else. I did try balsa. Yeah. That didn't work neither. I was so pissed off because the balsa, it's... The wood itself has um, a type of inner structure that doesn't allow for beaks of a certain size. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, many pieces of balsa, balsa later, it all fell apart. So I think, no, I can't do that. And um, I, I decided wire for some strange reason, I don't know. It was kind of like I saw some wire in a shop, thought, oh, I wonder if that works. Because it's kind of got that lightness. And I wanted lightness. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, you know, you catch a bird and it flutters in and it's light. Wood actually was no good because it was quite heavy. Mm. Anyway, so that was one of its negatives. So when I started this one, I started um, mucking around with wire, all sorts of wire. Now, this one was really, and I even fell over it. You know, sometimes it's that whole serendipitous nature of art where it happens, and I quite enjoy that because nothing, nothing is really planned. You, you have to trust yourself. Mm. When you're making stuff, because there's no one else. Part <laughs> 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 you alone in your your crying, which is really sad. Yeah, the wail of lost art is quite profound around me. Yeah. Anyhow, when I started these ones, I um, um, 
there's a lot of there's a lot of iterations before this. And like the actual material, like the uh, that must have taken a lot of hand. Oh, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like um, the actual, it's a weaving that you use in. Um, I, I was thinking of welding it, making a welded yep, bird. Yeah. And then it started looking like jewellery, and I thought, no, that's not what I want. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to have to make this with my hands. Yeah. Do, weaving it, and uh, and checking out all sorts of wire, which is a pain in the butt. <laughs> that's why it took about three years because mm. it takes a long time to work through different techniques. And um, I finally found this wire. It was just by accident, accidental actually, and it was um, high tensile wire, which has a, the capacity to spring back. Ah. So that's what happens. It goes. Wow. So that. So that the other wire was to flatten it, and so you, it didn't matter how many times you, after you wove it for pull it out, it would just break. Wow. Because it doesn't have strength. Now high tensile wire has got, because I talked to the man in the shop. <laughs> yeah, the high tensile wire. The shop. <laughs> so what is that? Because this is, um, it has that kind of strength because it has a very high um, carbon in it. Ah. And that allows for it to have that kind of strength in it. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And the structures that they sit on. Oh, that was Tamaya. Amazing tamahi. work, eh? Now I said to Tamahi, look, I just want that stuff that's, I tried welding in my in my studio, which is underneath the house, and then you burnt the house down. So I thought that's not a good idea. I wanted to take this outside. I don't like being outside in the pissing down rain, no. which was happening all the time. So I asked off. Jenny came up with this name, Martin. So and ran around to Martin and said, "Please help." So <laughs> he did, and I said, "Well," he said, "What do you want?" I said, "I wanted some branches and tree." These are actually experiments that we're doing for something else. Anyway. Well, they were, and then they became beautiful things of themselves. Yeah. He made them, and I just said, wow, that's quite extraordinary. Anyway, um, so, so we talked about it, and I said, what I wanted was just something that really allows the steel to be itself. Not, not a tree. I'm not going to make a steel tree. Well, he made a steel tree. I said, nah, that's not it. Mm. I want it. I want it to be itself, the steel to be itself, mm. the rod to be itself. So then they started doing the stuff that, that the way I wanted it, which is really cool. And they were really neat men because they began to see, like I said, the, very, the creatives themselves. So they could bypass some of the lewd stuff. Because mm. mm. a lot of the time it's lewd stuff that blocks your passage, your, your thinking. I try not to have too much of that because if you have too much thinking about something, it falls over. Yeah. Oh, that's me. So, <laughs> anyhow, so those came up before they, um, they were in part to do with what I was going to be doing elsewhere, but it was also to do with Jenny's show. Yeah. So these ones came up and I went mad trying to get those together um, with Tamahi. Tamahi finally finished everything and I was racing to make the birds and stuff and how they were going to sit on the branch and all that stuff. Oh. It doesn't matter. It's a long story. Anyway, um, the Friday, before, the Wednesday before the show opened, the Wednesday of the week before the show opened, that one behind you, uh, in front of us, um, we had talked about it, Tamahi and I had talked about it before COVID-19, and we were about to do it, and it fell over, because we couldn't. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we couldn't actually be together. So, um, just before the show opened, I decided to do that one. Unfortunately, this one here mm -hmm. uh, lost all its birds. <laughs> it was all those birds down here. Oh, They're up there. I like that. Because it, ta well, it takes a, a much shorter time to make birds now. Yeah. It takes me about um, an hour, two hours. Wow. But when I was making them before, it took about two days. Wow. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking about your work. I love these works so much. I just had a wonderful afternoon with them yesterday. And oh, cool. thank you so much. Kia ora. Cheers.